When communicating data, especially in a business setting, we like to articulate the benefits of using simple, more common visuals like bar charts, line graphs, simple text and tables. That being said, even if using more familiar chart types, we can still construct them in a way that makes it just that little bit more difficult for our audience to process. Let's take a look at this with an example. As you process this graph, I wonder what meaningful insights can you uncover? Let's take a closer look. Personally, I'm struggling, but let me start by saying that I do appreciate the clear titling of the axis and chart here. At least I know what I'm looking at. It's file checking data showing the number of file check failures at three individual levels. Level one file check failures are considered the most important. Failures that could incur regulatory sanctions if not dealt with promptly. Level two checks are internally important and need vigilant remediation, while level three checks are more internal housekeeping issues to address. If I spend considerable effort, I can just about see the trends of each of these bars. The level one file checks increase through 2021 and then begin to decrease to a low point in December 2023. The level two files are difficult to spot, sandwiched between the level one and the level three bars, and my eyes start to go a little bit funny as I try and scan across. The level three bars are easier as the trend is pretty flat down there at the bottom. We could try a couple of things to make it easier to view each trend individually, but also provide the ability to compare across the different categories. My ultimate goal for this communication is to understand whether changes made to the sales advice process in the middle of 2022 have been successful in reducing file check failures, at which levels, if any, have reductions occurred, and how these failures now compare to one another in case focus needs to shift to a different area. Understanding this will allow for specific recommendations to be made to continue improvements to the advice process. By the way, I'm making these changes in PowerPoint. If you are presenting your work, it can be beneficial to build directly here rather than in Excel, as almost identical graph creation options are present. It's likely that the creation of this visual came down more to the default outputs from our tool rather than any particular specific intentional design choices from our creator. Now I'm going to retain the bars for now, but instead of the way they're currently grouped, focus on changing around the grouping of the individual bars. To do that, we need to do a little bit of restructuring with our data. Currently we have our data shown with one set of dates, 2021 to 2023, followed by each of our file check levels as their own individual columns. To achieve the look we are going for, we need to duplicate the date range three times. And now we have one column of data, which will be populated with the respective file level information. You'll also notice a couple of blank rows in the data. This helps provide a natural break in the graph. Making these changes shows our bars grouped by month. You'll also notice how those gaps in the data help this view. Now we've chosen to group by periods of time, monthly, this immediately feels easier to compare each of the file check levels. Those trends which became increasingly difficult to see in the original bar chart have now become immediately obvious. And now I can see that dramatic impact the process changes have made to the level one checks. I have two main challenges though with this view. Firstly, it still feels very dense in terms of visual weight with these bars and I've lost the ability to compare the different levels with each other. For example, in which month did level one failures become lower than level two? That's almost impossible to answer here with precision. Let's take steps to address these two challenges now. To reduce the weighty feeling of the bars, we can convert them to lines. We are only really comparing the ends of the bars here after all, and with time-based data, we have the perfect use case for a line. There are a couple of ways we can achieve this. To reflect this change immediately, we can simply right click and select change chart type and click the line chart option. Now immediately this view feels lighter and easier to process. Note though how these lines are kind of floating in outer space a bit and don't have the advantage of the bars being anchored to a baseline. 
This lack of structure might necessitate the need to add axis labels, tick marks and lines to each of our file level views. To make this change, we actually need to create three separate graphs. The easiest way to achieve this is to get our first graph in the ideal position and then copy and paste a new graph. And then we can just simply copy the new values into that newly created and pasted graph. If we repeat the process for the third graph, Note how by doing this, we've got different axis scales for each of our new charts. We're going to need to make sure we have a consistent Y axis to allow that accurate comparison. And then finally leverage the alignment tools that we have in PowerPoint just to get everything lined up nicely. Well, this is so much better, but we need to address the second original challenge that I had, which was the comparison across the file levels was still a bit of an effort. Again, that question, when did level one failures become lower than level two? The final change we can make here is to show our data with one continuous X axis of time and having the three levels of file checking as three individual lines. Now to do this, I'd recommend if you've managed to retain that original bar chart, going back to that in PowerPoint, because to make the change to the line chart that we want is pretty easy to do. This is another advantage of building in PowerPoint as each slide or graph within a slide is independent. So I can simply take a copy of my original slide, paste and any changes I make to the graph are only reflected in this new slide. Simply right click, change chart type and select line chart. Yeah, we'll need to do a bit of formatting here of the lines, but this is a pretty good start. Now that same original question that I had is easy to answer. The crossover point between level one and level two clearly happened in March of the latest year. Now this could be a key insight that we want to draw our audience's attention to. And by reducing the amount of data shown, plus adding a clear takeaway with some sparing use of color, we can lead our audience to this important point in our design with a clear recommendation on what we should be looking to do going forward. We love a bar chart, but they can still be complicated if constructed in the wrong way, or we fill them up with too much data. In this example, we've looked at a number of different options and eventually uncovered an insight that we want to share with our audience. If you like data visualization makeovers, I recommend watching this video next. Until next time, thank you for watching and have a great day.